Shambhal. Shambhal is an ancient Tibetan Buddhist prophecy about a land of spiritual bliss. At the same time, it's a powerful call for spiritual resistance, originally directed against Muslim invaders in early Middle Ages. In my book, I want to tell you a fascinating story. The story about how, in our modern age, particularly in 1920s and 1930s, a group of people wanted to use Shambhal and related prophecies of the Tibetan Mongol world to promote their spiritual and geopolitical schemes. These were people of different backgrounds and ideals. For example, Nicholas Rohr, a Russian-American painter from New York City, who once uh, posed as a reincarnated Dalai Lama and wanted to start the Shambhala War in the heart of Asia. Or another one, Gleb Boki, one of the bosses of the Soviet secret police. Boki wanted to merge Kalachakra Tantra, a sacred spiritual technique of Tibetan Buddhism, with ideas of communism. Roman Lungen von Steinberg, a Baltic baron, who briefly hijacked Mongolia, and he wanted to use Tibetan Buddhism to revive uh, monarchies from the east to the west. Or take, for example, another name, Agvan Darji, one-time tutor for the 13th Dalai Lama. Darjeev wanted to bring all Tibetan Buddhists in a huge Tibetan Buddhist theocracy in Inner Asia. Despite the differences, despite the different ideals, they were driven by the same, I would say, totalitarian temptation. They believed in ultimate solution. They were sincerely convinced they would be able to build the paradise on the earth. Society devoid of any spiritual and social contradictions. Essentially, Red Shambhala is a story, a tragic story, a tragic story about the spiritual life of the past 20th century, which uh, one historian once called the century of the extremes.